Hello everybody and welcome back to This is Quoth Plays Hearthstone. I hope you guys have been watching recently because we have been shaking things up like no tomorrow by playing decks that we don't completely understand. And uh, this will sort uh, sort of be a similar episode and sort of won't. Um, what we're going to do is this. Um, we're going to start by playing the Druid deck, which is one of my favorite decks in Legendary. We need to start winning again. We've lost the last two or three Legendary matches that we played, if I recall correctly. And I'm kind of sick of losing, so we're gonna try the Druid deck and see if we can make you know make back some of our uh, some of what we've lost. Um, the Druid and the Warlock deck are two of my better decks. The Hunter also being a competitive deck um, that I feel like we can win with, and I'd like to see if we can work our way back up to 12 at least by the end of the season, which is Wednesday. Um, that is kind of a low ambition goal. Um, I think we can definitely get to 12 if we play enough games here. I just don't know if I'm willing to uh, face the defeats over and over again because my Recent Nature will rise minimal. against you. Um, we are, are going to mulligan Ragnaros because it's not good early, as well as these two. Hopefully we get something a little better. I, I feel like every time I mulligan Senjin, I end up getting something way worse, like so. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the best idea ever, but we actually can summon Chilwin Yeti really quickly here if we want to. I'm not sure if it's the best idea in the whole world, but it, we, we certainly can do it. Um, instead, I'm going to do a little, a little differently. I'm going to play the coin, and I'm going to play Wild Growth. And that's going to give us an extra mana crystal. So the next turn we actually have three. Um, which is going to be huge, I think, for us. Because then we can innervate and play Chilwin Yeti if we want to. Or play something else. But we have plenty of options as to how to proceed here. And we're going to have a one... With the fact that we're starting after him, we're going to be... We're going to actually have a mana advantage. Um, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to do what I said. Because we'd actually be a mana behind... Which would be kind of a waste. For the wild. So instead, we're just going to attack um, directly for two, which is what we could have done turn two anyway. But this turn, we'll be able to play Chilwin Yeti outright, and we'll still have Innervate waiting for us in case we want to play um, Ancient of War in the next turn, um, which is hopefully going to give us a pretty big advantage here against uh, Koa Hambamba. Um, I could be wrong, but you know, he's kind of doing the same things I am, so I'm not really all that sure how this deck's going to fare against mine. It could be a complete mirror, in which case we might might be a very interesting game, but um, we're going to summon Chilwin Yeti and start, you know, start rocking things right now. We're going to start shaking it up and see what happens, uh, see what falls out. Um, so this is the first test. I'm putting a 4-5 minion into play on turn 3. You have 4 mana. What are you going to do to deal with this? That's what I want him want, want to know right now. What does he have that can deal with a 4-5 on turn 3? Um, he might have a Wrath, which is three mm -hmm. damage, not enough. Uh, another Chillwind, okay, that also, uh, <laughs> that's also adequate. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to Innervate, as I said. And I'm going to take his Chillwind Yeti and raise him one Ancient of Wisdom. And now it's his problem to deal with, so let's see what he can how he responds to now having a 5-10 on turn 5. Where shall I strike? Okay. So it's, it's going to become one of these kinds of games, I can already tell. Um, so, best, bet, best method to use here is an interesting one. We could play Sylvanas Windrunner. But I don't know if that's the best time to play Sylvanas. What I'm thinking about is actually playing another Faces Manipulator to... Hmm, I wonder... Kind of give my Ancient of War... Eh. I don't play Mark of the Wild on my Chilly Game. My healing touch on. Which may seem like a waste to a lot of people, but I kind of want to have the 6 7 on there. Um, I think that he's having a tough trouble dealing with what I have right now. If I can start adding ridiculous None creatures like that, we'll be in good shape. And I'm actually really glad I did that now that he's destroyed my 5 10. Okay. So. Five mana. What do I do? Um, now, I was thinking about Faceless manipulating my Chilwin Yeti. 
but I am no longer going to do that because F Faces Manipulator is about the best, you know, probably the best combo with Ragnaros that there could possibly be. So I'm going to summon Sylvanas no Windrunner instead. Games. We're going to take out... I'll remove his black head. The reason I'm doing this is because hopefully it's going to kind of force him to attack me with the Chillin Yeti, which will take out both of his minions, and I'm okay with that because Ragnaros is my real threat. I'm kind of fainting here, I guess would be the best uh, way to put it. I'm kind of making it look like I'm trying to gain, you know, trying to I must give him a weakness to take advantage of, but in reality, I'm not. So what I didn't count on was him using Wrath, so that's going to kind of waste that. He might still attack me. Yeah, attack him. He's going to attack me directly with him, so that's okay. I'm not too upset about that on the whole. Alright, so now... Let none survive! Now he has to deal with Ragnaros, which is pretty much everybody's worst nightmare as far as this is concerned. Um, he has 8 mana to work with, which is a lot. He might have something that he can take out Ragnaros with. But I took away the Yeti, which means that he I took away the board control he could have had. Uh, he could have had 6 damage on the board, and now, now he only has 2. See, we, Let's see if he can make up the additional 6. Alright, swipe to take out Sylvanas. He could have a second swipe, which is possible. That might be his plan. He might also have a Wrath, which he could do 3 damage to me and then therefore attack with the other one. I'm hoping he does not, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hmm. All right, I think if he had it, he would have played it by now, so he's probably considering how best to approach this next turn. My guess is he is going to attack Ragnaros to get him down to at least two health here. Um, now, if he can make up one damage, he could attack Time waits with for no one. his himself, but he would be down to 6 health, which is generally considered a bad move. He is a little, looks like he's probably stumped right now, but what he's planning to do. He's at or he just had to crap really bad. Chill and Yeti, alright, so he was thinking about what he wanted to do. He eventually landed on summoning Chill and Yeti, which is fine. Um... We're going to do this anyway, as I said before, um, and we're going to go ahead and take away one of them. If one Ragnaros hits Chill and Yeti, that's fine. If they both hit him directly, I win. Okay, so he's still alive with five health left. Um, and he has two Ragnaroses, both with four health to deal with. Difficult situation, not as difficult if they were both 8-8s, eight but once again, the double Ragnaros is pretty much my trump card in this deck. If, if he can beat the double Ragnaros, I still have a chance here because he's, they've already done the damage that I was hoping for. Um, but if he can't beat them, then the, well, they once again have given me a win, which is not the first time in this series of episodes that it's done so. Um, I think the double Ragnaros combo has pretty much the uh, been the trump card I've played to win the game multiple times, probably five or six different matches. What to do? Time waits for no one. You gotta take one of most, but if you had Swift last turn, I don't know why you didn't the Ragnaros to begin with. Unless he just drew it, it's all I can think of. Maybe he just drew it or he stepped away from the keyboard for a second and forgot. Um, either way, My shield for Argon. he's in a kind of a bad spot here. Mark of the Wild, Taunt plus two plus two. Okay, we're actually gonna do that. Um, I've never ever considered this combo before. We're going to give him Taunt, which looks like a horrible idea. Then use Black Knight to kill him, giving Ragnaros a clear shot for the win. I have never in my life... <laughs> I've never in my life considered a move like that. 
but uh, whatever. Whatever it takes to win. You probably could have been like, what the fuck just happened? But you know what? We're going to get 40 gold out of that. And we're going to hoard our gold for now because of the, re the upcoming expansion. And we're going to take a win, and now we're one star further towards the truth. Now, skipping from rank into casual, um, we're going to try another new deck. And that's called, well, I call it Deck That Wins, but it's another deck on Hearth Pond, which is supposedly a tournament winner over in Australia somewhere that um, apparently is one of the best hunter decks out there. It seems very generic. Um, it's a little different than the one I run right now. It has a little more beasts in it. But we're going to see how it works and uh, try it out real quick here. And, uh, I feel like the Hunter Rush deck is like the key to get to gaining rank in Legendary. Uh, towards Legendary, and I feel like I need to learn it. it. Despite the fact that it's not my favorite kind of deck, I feel like I need to be better at it. Rexa versus Thrall. And like all Hunter decks, I long to be against anyone but a Shaman, and of course I run into a Shaman. We're gonna mulligan these. We're gonna mulligan that too. Till Timberwolves, Savannah Hymane, and Flare. Alright, Flare we can pretty much just use because there's no secrets or stealth really in a Shaman deck. Job done. Might as well just get the card. Scavenging Hyena. Okay, that can be our turn too. the end of their turn. Not much not much a happening. <laughs> when a friendly beast dies, gain plus two plus one. It's a strong card if you can make it work for you. I don't know if I can, but for now we're going to summon him and see what happens. And he is going to summon an unbound elemental. I'm okay with this on the whole. Um, let me think. So I'm going to play Flare again. Okay. Now we're just going to sacrifice one for the other. Next turn we could summon our Animal Companion or Hound Master, which is fine. Um, probably a companion. Okay. Job's done. And we'll buff each of them. I only did that because I have another Timberwolf. So if they want to kill it, they can try, and they'll they'll do damage themselves trying it. But I have no real issue with summoning him here um, because it buffs my my four into something that can do something. Uh, they're gonna go ahead and kill it. I got obviously the worst animal companion that I can get. Okay. So however this deck is supposed to be played, I feel like I've done very poorly. Hmm. Probably could combine that with the uh, Timberwolf, but too late now. Right, so not looking too good here. We already lost board control, and we're the hunter. So Savannah High this is where we Job gain it back. Done. The Savannah High main Timberwolf combo. He spends all his resources killing him, I still get two hyenas out of it. And I have another Savannah Hyman in my hand. So everything appears to be peachy. Okay, and part of me kind of hopes that he takes the easy shot here. 
kills Savannah Highmane with his knife juggler. And then I proceed to summon another one and give him all plus one attack when I summon two hyenas. So that's my hope. Um, to get a lot of really buffed cards really quick. Ah! I don't see what he can do to take care of it. Oh, he's going to use the Lightning Storm. <laughs> Leoc is still around. I got lucky he only did the two damage instead of the three, so he still has two health left. Again, I made a totem. Give himself card draw, which is fine. see what we can do now. Um, I didn't summon the high main this turn because I wanted to take care of the mana totem before he had a chance to draw like 50 cards on me, but we'll summon the, the high main most likely next turn. So I see this game and then here, so I think so far. It's very dis disappointing to me that the shaman seems to be countering my rush attack decks so thoroughly. And at this point, we're completely top decking, so we are going to lose this match. We have literally no way to win. And they should have enough to kill me on this turn once the uh, once they summon something else. They only need one more damage to do it. They have one more other than lethal here. these other people play. Hunter, I'm sure it's probably much different than me. Um, I'm not the mo not the biggest, you know, proponent of the Hunter deck, so it's possible that I just simply do not understand the strategy behind playing that type of rush. Uh, it didn't seem to work out very well for me that time, but, um, you know, that certainly happens when you play Hearthstone. I will try it again and give it another fair shake in the next episode, see if we have a chance to uh, play maybe in a uh, casual game against something other than a Shaman. But for now, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.